So today I have a call for some RV entryway steps that won't come out. You know, the ones that go every time you open the door and fly out, well, his aren't flying. They apparently aren't doing anything at all. I am hoping it is something simple, like a bad fuse, like a switch out and solve this problem real quick. But with RVs, you never know. So I thought I'd take you along for the ride. This customer is in Boulder City, which if you're not from Las Vegas, it is just a little bit longer of a drive than I normally do. But I did not realize that was where he was until he texted in his address. And at that point it was too late. So we're going for it today. We're gonna go help somebody out. Fingers crossed. Lavira didn't believe that last part, but Aunt Tina had been fond of saying. Oh my god, that call went really well. Pretty confident I know what their problem is, but I thought I would walk you through what I did to see if you came to the same conclusion. So our main problem was that these motorized steps weren't coming in and out, which usually means there's an electrical problem somewhere. When it comes to RVs and solving electrical problems, 80% of the time, you're just tracing the path of the electricity, seeing where it came from, seeing where it's supposed to go, and what happened in between. So the first step is to know that there are two types of electricity in RVs. You have AC power and DC power. So the first thing you need to figure out is, is your appliance an AC appliance or a DC appliance? Motorized steps are DC power, as is your lights, your slides, your leveling jacks, all of the circuit boards in your appliances, they all run off of DC power, which comes from your batteries. So then we just trace the path of the DC power and see where it stops. So we start at the source, which is the batteries. You can go and immediately check the batteries. I personally, and a lot of techs, tend to just use the shortcut of turning on your lights. If your lights turn on, then you're at least getting 12 volts either from your converter or from your battery. If we need to, we can get into the nitty gritty of if it's the converter or the battery, which one's it? But honestly, that usually only matters for like the slides. For something low power, like the motorized steps, as long as we're getting 12 volts from somewhere, we're okay. So we turned on the lights, confirmed we've got power coming from somewhere. The next place I usually check are the fuses. If you followed along for a while, you know that's like my go-to starting point for most electrical problems in an RV. So we went through, double checked that we were getting 12 volts to the fuse panel, which we knew we would because the lights turned on, and then checked to make sure all of the fuses are good. I honestly ignore these labels on the sides. In the time it would take me to try to decipher the handwriting and like figure out which one is the one I want, I can just test all of them and know they're all good. That's just like an added service you get when you call this RV repair woman. We test all of your fuses. I've actually had customers in the past where I've shown up to fix one thing. And since the first thing I do is check the fuses, the fuses weren't the problem for the thing that they called for, but one of their fuses had popped for like the lights in the back half of the RV, which they said hadn't worked in forever. And they were just working around it by like adding plug-in lights everywhere. And so yeah, switch that fuse out. And all of a sudden they had light in their bedroom, which was like not what they had called for, but was a fun added bonus. But for the customer we had today, all of their fuses were good. So the next place that I checked was at the switch for the steps. There honestly may be something in between the fuse box and that switch. I doubt it, but it was the next logical place that electricity would go. So that's where I went. So we unscrewed the panel, got access to the switch and just made sure that 12 volts were making it to the switch and they were. So then it was time to crawl under the RV to take a look at the steps themselves. You know, always try to avoid crawling underneath heavy equipment if we don't have to and getting dirty. Not that I have any problem with getting a little grubby, but you know, I try to stay clean if I can. So underneath looked a little like this. There was a closed off circuit board moment that I honestly am not 100% sure on the ins and outs of. So I decided to skip that part and just see if I gave power straight to the motor 
if it would turn. So I went and took, I have this Power Wheels adapter for my DeWalt battery. It just takes the power coming from the battery and just supplies it out to two wires. So I just disconnected the motor. It only had two wires coming out of it, so I had to assume those were power. Disconnected those, shoved the wires from my power adapter into the motor, and uh, when I flipped the switch, nothing happened. So at this point, Pretty sure that we have a bad motor. Ooh, I even have it. I can show it to you. Ta-da! Ooh, ah, sad motor. But I always like to have like a double check or a triple check before I condemn parts. It's always sad when you have to tell someone that something is just like died. This does feel a little grubby. Like something might be stuck in it. Maybe we'll take it apart when we get home and see if that'll do it. So I unscrewed the motor from the RV and the steps just like fell, which also confirmed to me that it wasn't like something was stuck in the steps itself, preventing the motor from turning. It was really the motor that was preventing the steps from moving. So have a pretty strong suspicion that the motor is our problem, like 90% sure. But I would still like to confirm that power is making it to that motor. So they don't have two problems, a motor and a signal problem. So at this point, I took my multimeter, shoved it into the plug that had connected to the motor. Ooh, I'll grab it. The plug that had plugged in to this plug Ooh. I put my multimeter leads into that and then opened and closed the RV door a couple of times just to see that I was indeed getting 12 volts when it opened and then negative 12 volts when I closed it. So we've confirmed that signal is making it out of the fuse panel through the switch and all the way to the motor. The motor just isn't moving. And then when I supply my own 12 volts to the motor, it also doesn't move. So nearly 100% sure that this guy is the problem. Unfortunately, I just didn't have good enough service near the customer to look up uh, if I could source a new one. So back to the office to see if we can go find a new one of these. Okay, so it's a couple days later and the part came in and I wanna bench test it before I drive it all the way out to Boulder City and put it in. I just wanna make sure the thing works and also be able to confirm that it acts differently than the motor that I took out. Because if they act differently, then it also doubles down on my diagnosis that the motor was the problem. The only kink in this plan is I currently have a broken air conditioner on my workshop table because I'm currently working on making an ebook guide on how to diagnose your own air conditioner. Just like I did sort of with the water heater video, except water heaters are much easier to diagnose and the air conditioners doing a full how to test everything is a little bit more than I could do in one video. So I'm trying to make a guide for people that I can put up on my website, but it means I have this very heavy air conditioner on my work table and I need to get it off. And I'm not entirely sure how I got it on there by myself. So let's see how this goes. space to work with. I've got the old motor here. I've got my Power Wheels adapter. For those of you that don't know, this, literally something you can get on Amazon under 20 bucks. And I think they're meant for those like toy cars that kids love. Um, and it allows you to run them off of like your impact driver battery. Super easy. And like, if you wanna start diagnosing electrical problems in your RV, this is just a must have because it allows you to isolate problems. You could just really easily give power to specific elements real quick. Just be like, are you the problem? No, cool, on to the next thing. Absolutely love, put off getting one for so long. I don't know why, just cause like, there's just so many things you have to buy when you're starting this type of business and you're like, do I really need it? This, you really need, highly recommend. All right, so we got that. And old motor, power wheels adapter so we can supply power and the new motor. That's hopefully gonna look very similar to this old one. Let's see. It's 
like a burrito. Uh, yes. The holes look the same. Yay. Okay. So far, so good. The gear looks the same. And the power cord looks the same. Okay. Liking how it's looking so far. Okay. So remember when we gave power to the old motor, it did nothing. It didn't move at all. So I'm hoping when we supply power to the new motor, it at least does something. Okay. Now what? All right, let's work backwards. Make sure I'm actually giving 12 volts. Oh, I'm not. Okay, that's good for once. Let's see, is it this fuse? Fuse is broken. Okay, yay, I think I have one in the corner. Yay, okay, let's try this again. New fuse, dude. Fuse in. Okay, let's test again. Make sure we're giving, make sure we're giving 12 volts. Still no, why? Fuse good. Ah, okay, battery's good, we just need, we're getting past the way, guys. It happens. Okay, let's try this one more time. I should probably just remake this with wire nuts because this uh, gauge of wire is too big for these Wagos. I just love Wagos, they're so easy. They just freaking work most of the time. Try it again, third time's the charm, you know? You know what, that's what they all say. Boom, okay, we're getting 20 volts to the leads. Now, if we send 20 volts to the motor, can we just get any sign of life? Come on. Yes! Let's go! Added pickle for today. My truck would not start. So we're back in the Kia, threw everything I needed for this job. Hopefully I have everything. Gotta love having an old truck. Okay, now I just need to re-remember how this goes up here. Moment of truth. Hey! And the other way, dude, I love when things work. I could do this all day long.